Hello, welcome to this section of the Chemistry Tutor. Here we're going to uh, talk about something that's somewhat related to what we did in the last section. It's called percent yield. Percent yield in a chemical reaction. And if you notice, I've left the last problem that we just worked on the board because I'm going to use some of the results of it to explain something here in just a minute. So for now, just ignore what I have here. It's what we've already done. You've already seen it. Uh, just listen to me for a second and we'll come back to this and go forward. Um, basically, we talked about this a, a little bit as well. The theoretical yield of something uh, is what we calculate. That's what is sort of like perfect, exactly what we should get. We already talked about the fact that in real life you're not going to get your theoretical yield. It's always going to be less than your theoretical yield, almost certainly, because lots of things. You might have, a, you know, some of your reactant uh, may not be pure, right? Some of your product, you may not be able to measure it perfectly. Maybe you drop some on the floor. Maybe uh, some of it comes out of the reaction vessel as some kind of vapor and goes off before you can capture it. So you may not be able to measure that. Also, frequently in complicated chemical reactions, maybe you have three or four reactants producing three or four products. You may have some side reactions that you're not anticipating. Like maybe if you're mixing water with this, with that, with the other thing, and you're writing down your reaction, there may be a teeny tiny amount of a side reaction going on between two of the reactants producing something else that you're just not taking into account. Especially if you're investigating a new reaction. You may not know ahead of time what's going to be produced. So you make your best guess, but maybe there's a little side reaction going on between two of the reactants. So what this basically means is that when you measure the products, um, you're never going to measure the exact theoretical yield uh, that, you, that you calculate. It's just not going to happen. All right. So what we define then is because we know we're going to calculate a theoretical yield and we know we're going to measure an actual yield that's lower, we calculate something that we call the percent yield, which is just a comparison of those two numbers is all it is. So don't get too frightened off by this. What this is, uh, I'll just write it down, percent yield. And this is how we calculate it. Basically all we say is we take the actual yield, you know, this is what you measure. The actual yield is what you measure in the lab. It's not perfect. You divide it by the theoretical. Right? Now when you take a number and divide by a number, they're pretty close in size, you're going to get a decimal. So what you do is you multiply by 100 to make it a percentage. That's all you're doing. Um, that's why we multiply by 100. So for instance, if your theoretical is, uh, yield is 2 grams of something, uh, you expect to, to actually make two grams of water or something. Maybe your actual yield isn't quite two grams. Maybe your actual yield is like 1.94 grams. Maybe that's what you actually measure. That's why it's called actual. So you take the 1.94, you divide by the two, and since the bottom, number's uh, the bottom number's always bigger than the top number, you're always gonna get a decimal. So then you multiply that by 100 and you're gonna get a percent. And so if this actual yield is very close to the theoretical yield, you know, if it's like 1.9999 grams divided by 2 grams and you multiply by 100, then you're going to get a number very close to 100% theoretical, 100% yield. You're going to get a number very close. In fact, if your actual yield was exactly equal to the theoretical yield, you know, 2 grams of actual, that's what I measure, 2 grams of theory, that's what I actually calculated, then this is going to give you 1 times 100 means 100%. So in that case, when it's perfectly done, you're going to get 100% yield. So you can see what this calculation is doing. It's giving you a relative indicator of how close you came to your theory. So if somebody's in a lab and they say, hey, I've done an experiment, I did 89% yield, 